We'll keep it rolling now with the uh, Ole Miss offense. Uh, joining us now, co-offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss, wide receiver Trey Harris, and tight end Caden Prescorn. Uh, just a couple of opening statements, Coach. Talk about uh, just getting through bowl week and what the experience has been like and, and now sort of shifting the focus to, to game day. Yeah, it's been you know extremely exciting being here at the Peach Bowl. It's been very welcoming, really fun to be here. It's been it's cool seeing the competition stuff last night and just kind of all the festivities that you get. But our players have been great. They've been super focused, you know, in the preparation, getting ready for the game. So obviously, it's always unique when you have such a long break in between games. But our guys have done a phenomenal job. You know, they're really excited to be here, and uh, we're just ready for the game. All right, thanks, Coach. Uh, Trey and uh, you guys, you guys have obviously have gotten to do a lot of fun stuff off the field. Uh, what's been your favorite event so far? Uh, my favorite event was probably last night, just going through the College Hall of Fame, uh, just seeing the history and uh, seeing all the bowls and everything like that, and seeing all the players that, that were inducted and stuff like that. It was probably my favorite part so far. Yeah, Caden, what about you? What was your yeah, favorite? Definitely event? the same thing, seeing the College Football Hall of Fame, because I've never got to see that or experience that before, and that was awesome to see that and just. Being at a team event with us in Penn State, it was kind of fun just to interact with each other and just compete against each other. Yeah, I, I'll tell you, I've, I've been doing this. That was my 24th of those, and that was by far the most energy that we have had. I've never seen players stand on chairs before uh, getting into it that much. Um, that, that was fun. And congratulations on the big win. I'm not saying anything, but about 90% of the time, the team that, win that wins the belt wins the game. Like to hear that. So I'm not saying anything. All right, let, all right, let's do some questions. We'll start right here, second row on the far right. This is for, for Trey and Caden. Um, you guys came from a group of five schools. You know, I imagine you guys grew up watching games like this. Now that you're here, you're going to play in a game like this. What is, what is this experience, this moment like for you guys? Um, it's, it's surreal. Uh, you know, you, exactly how you say you grew up watching games like this. And um, to finally be a part of it is, is it's one, it's honorable. It's a, it's a huge honor to be a part of, thing, of a game like this. And um, it's a dream come true. We all want to go out there and play in the big games. And uh, to be able to do that is, is huge for me, especially for me and my career and everyone else on this team. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely one of the big, probably the biggest game of my career, just New Year's Six Bowl on the biggest stage, and one of the biggest stages in college football. So we just, just coming, just how I've came up, just as a walk on and all that, just playing one of these games is just surreal. Right here, second row, left. This is Kyle Golick from Mike Farrell Sports. This is for Coach Weiss. I talked to Coach Poindexter in the last session, and he cited tempo is what makes you guys unique to Penn State. What does the Penn State defense do that makes them unique to you? Yeah, I think they're just an extremely well-coached, disciplined football team. Uh, they play very assignment sound, very minimal bust, very minimal mental errors and they've got players at all three levels of the defense they've got a great d-line they've got linebackers they've got secondary players so i think just top to bottom they're the most you know probably the most complete defense you know i've seen um and so it's extremely impressive and just how they have those players and get them to play very assignment sound i think just very well structured overall defense all right, next question all right row two Trey, just I know we've kind of asked you this before, but now that you're here and, and through this practice, what kind of momentum can you carry, a, and Caden as well, with, with, uh, into next season with the win and just kind of having success this week? Um, it'll be a lot of momentum going into the next year. Uh, we go out there and get a dub. Uh, we're playing against a very a blue butt uh, type of program, so it'd be good to go, get, go out there and uh, get a win against them. And then on top of that, we'd be doing something we've never done in Ole Miss history and getting our 11th, our 11th win. So just having those two milestones uh, ahead of us going to next year would be huge and bring a whole lot of momentum, especially for next year. Okay. This one's for, for Caden. Obviously, um, you, you dealt with some, some injuries and, and some personal stuff um, early in the season. At, at what point this year did you feel healthy and, and ready, I guess, w within the offense, knowing what you needed to do? When did it kind of click for you? I'd say probably right after the bye week during the Auburn week, I got mo mostly healthy or all the way back, and I felt really comfortable on the offense because like, dealing with that foot injury and just everything else that's happened, it got kind of got set back a little bit, kind of taken away from football. But I feel like that week kind of helped me, like the, getting through the bye week and 
getting through Auburn week, I feel like that's when I became my health, became healthy. Back over here, row two on the left. So I'm following up on Coach Weiss' statement. Hopefully the guys here can also elaborate on this. You called the Penn State defense one of the most complete defenses that you've seen all year. You have guys also had the luxury, and I'm going to use luxury in quotation marks, to go up against Alabama and Georgia, who are perennially top defenses in the country. So how does Penn State compare to Alabama and Georgia in your mind? This for us? Yeah, who's that? Um, for us, um, they, they compare pretty well. We know, you know statistically they're, they're the top uh, defense in the country. You know, uh, Going out there against them is going to be a great matchup, and uh, we're really excited for it. Uh, the way they compare it to those other teams, I feel like they have a lot of structure. Uh, I feel like D-linemen in a way, the way they um, – they go out there and they pretty much wreck havoc out there. The D linemen are pretty much pretty good as well as pretty much the SEC guys. Uh, but to us, we can go out there and play our game, play our tempo, and be the most dominant team on the field. So, okay. Yeah, I feel like they're, they're, this this type of defense. They're always in the right spot. So we have to control what we can control and do our part on offense to give us the best chance to win. All right. Second row. Charlie, obviously the uh, injuries on the offensive line the last three games. I, mean, I know this is a unit that you rate about at the beginning of the season just because of how many snaps that these guys have kind of taken across the board. What have you learned about this unit just through those injuries late in the year and what gives you the confidence that they're going to be able to rise to the challenge against you know what may consider to be one of the more well-rounded defenses in college football, like you said? Yeah, I think we're, we're fortunate to have uh, you know some guys up front that are you know adaptable and can play different positions, guys like Jeremy James and you know our center Bucky. So. Uh, having guys who can, you know, Jeremy can play guard or tackle and Bucky can play center or guard. Uh, so having some flexibility and, you know, we're deeper there uh, than we were, you know, last year. So I think that that helps to it right there. And giving those guys some time to heal up, recover and, you know, rest. It's a long season for those guys. And a lot of those guys, those last three games were playing a ton of snaps. So uh, it's been good to get them some rest, get them back going. But I just think uh, it's been great that we've got some guys who have position flexibility uh, and that allows us to be creative and uh, where we play our guys. So, you know, looking forward to seeing those guys a little bit healthier, you know, as we go into this game on Saturday. Right, staying with the Row 2 crew. Charlie, did the defensive improvement that you all had this year, did, did that impact the way that the offense was called in, in, in any, any way, in your opinion? Yeah, I think every game is kind of independent, you know, of itself. You know, you know, sometimes you got to play a game where you got to you know, score a bunch of points, a game like LSU, and then, you know, at other times, you know, when the defense is playing well and, you know, you try to run the ball and, you know, you got to do whatever it takes to go 1-0 and that week. That's a big phrase that, that we use around here is whatever it takes to go 1-0. and And uh, whether that's, you know, scoring 50 points, scoring 17 points, whatever it takes to win, uh, that's the, the biggest thing at the end of the day. Uh, obviously, we want to have a ton of success offensively, but it's great going against Coach Golding and his defense uh, each and every day in practice. They make us better uh, every single day. And so uh, it's been great, you know, having those games where they can step up and control the game for us, you know, when we're not playing as well and same vice versa. So it's been, we've been very fortunate. I think that's, you know, large credit to our defense while we're 10 and 2 this year. All right, over here. Charlie, you're sitting up here with two guys that weren't originally from uh, SEC programs. When, when you're scouting in the transfer portal how do you know what is going to translate what do you look for is it traits what what specific things are you able to to, to scout yeah there's you know there's several things that you look for uh, i think one thing too you look at is you know how did they play against top competition you know when they have had those opportunities and train caden were both guys that you know had a lot of production in those kinds of games and uh, obviously, the biggest thing for us too is just you know getting getting guys up here and get them on visits and what's the fit like. And Trey and Caden are both pro mindset type guys. You know, unbelievable in their preparation, the things that they do, uh, and they've got the ability to match it right there. So I think you know you look at the fit, you look at how they do against top competition. You know, there's a variety of factors that go into those decisions. Uh, but you know, these two guys right here were no brainers. All right, let's switch it up over here. Go to the left. Uh, Charlie, you know, Penn State leads the nation in sacks. How can you use tempo to help Jackson in pass protection Saturday? Yeah, you know, tempo is always a huge part, you know, of what we do, you know, in terms of getting the D-line tired, you know, not letting them sub and, you know, certain things like that. So that's just a big part of who we are, you know, each and every week. And, you know, at the end of the day, we got we to gotta block them. We got to get the ball out on time. And, uh, you know, we just got to go out there and execute. It's all about us at the end of the day as a – you know, thing that we talk about. And so utilizing our tempo, you know, playing fast and having success, moving the chains on third down, 
you know, all those little things go together into us having a good game on Saturday. All right, back over here. Charlie, it, it, what's the challenges, or if they've been challenges, with, with John David kind of obviously getting that, you know, job and balancing back and forth this past month? Uh, what, what's that been like for you, or has it even affected what y'all have been working on? Yeah, you know, you definitely, whenever you lose a great coach, you know, other people have to step up. So, you know, several of the things that he did and, you know, helping, you know, put the game plan together, we've got to rely on some other people uh, in those situations. Obviously, we're extremely excited for Coach Baker to go, you know, and get that, that kind of a job. I know he's going to do, you know, phenomenal when he goes there. Uh, but it's always hard when you lose good coaches or good players. Uh, it's, you know, it's very similar. So other people have to step up and, you know, take those roles when he's gone. But obviously it's been great, you know, having him back here for bowl week and preparation and uh, being able to pick his brain and get ready to go for this game Saturday. Um, front row here on the right. Hey, this question is for all three of you. Um, obviously, we know you had a big season, lots of moments throughout that time. But I wanted to ask all three of you, is there any moment from the season that you're like, oh, yeah, that's my favorite moment? Uh, definitely the LSU game, just how we came back in the fourth quarter down, well, almost two, I think two scores and just coming back and just how we came back during that game and just how it turned out and how, how it finished. And just how the, our fans rushed the field, it was pretty awesome. Um, I was going to say LSU, but I'll, I'll switch it up. and. Uh, <laughs> I'll say the state game, that, that was good. You know, the entire week, we, we got screens up in the, uh, throughout the facility with them from last year, smoking uh, cigars, because they had won the Egg Bowl the previous year. So it felt good to go into rival, uh, on a rival field and uh, go get that win. So that was, that was a big win, and that was a real special moment for me as well. Yeah, I think the, uh, the LSU game for me as well, I think, too, just seeing our guys bounce back, you know, from the loss against Alabama and to come out and to play the way that we did, uh, I think it really speaks to the resilience uh, that we have as a football team, uh, as an offense, and so it was cool. And these two guys were there for that final touchdown right there, throwing it to Trey and Caden blocking for him right there. So it was pretty cool. All right, over here on the left. This is for Trey and Caden. Uh, the Penn State secondaries lauded as one of the best in the nation. Kalen King will be playing on Sundays. Daquan's one of the better slot corners in the country, et cetera. Uh, you guys have a good tempo offense. So for Trey and Caden, how are, what is your mindset going up against a secondary that is as good as Penn State's? Um, for me, my mindset every week, no matter what DB it is, is to go kill, go dominate, no matter who in front of me. So for me, it's to go out there and play my game and just execute the game plan that's being made for us. And you know, we know that <clears throat> they got a good secondary back there, but you know, we got good receivers. So we got good guys that, um, that are good pass catchers and uh, we got a good QB that's gonna get us the ball on time. So I mean, we'll go out there and play our game and we'll, go, we'll go bring it to them. Yeah, kind of like what Trey said, we got, we got great players too. And we, we have a great quarterback <laughs> that can distribute, distribute us the ball. So we know they have great players so it's going to be a battle for four quarters. All right, time for a few more. Where are we going next? All right, back up here in the front. All right, so I have to ask this question because I asked your teammates and other coaches as well. So totally serious question, but does sugar go in grits? No. No. Never. <laughs> I've never had it, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm right there with Kate. Not a great guy. This has been highly debated all week. It's, it's very split. No, uh, we, uh-uh. It's straight salt and pepper, that's it. <laughs> cheese? Oh, we put cheese in there. We ain't putting no sugar, though. Uh-uh. I'll put sugar in spaghetti. That's about well, it. Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> All right, a couple more where we're going next, guys. All right, back here, second, second row on the right. Charlie, um, obviously with the wide receiver contingent that you all had this year, you leaned on them pretty heavily. How would you evaluate the development um, that's taken place of some of the younger guys uh, that you've been able to retain? Um, what, what's that been like uh, considering you know, the, the, the snap counts? Yeah, we're, we're super excited about some of those young guys. You know, uh, Aiden Williams, Caden Lee definitely stand out. Uh, as guys that are going to have really bright futures for us. You know, they've done a great job. 
Obviously, everybody wants to start. Everybody wants to you know, get a bunch of balls and all that. But those two guys have had a fantastic mindset throughout the season of always being ready, always having the you know, next man up. If an injury does happen, you know, they're ready to go. And so I'm really excited to see those guys moving forward you know, on Saturday and you know, going into next season, you know, taking bigger roles and getting more snaps. And so uh, we're really, really excited about those two. They're going to be special. And um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of guys in that room that have done a great job all year. Obviously, we've got you know three frontline guys that that played a lot and made a lot of plays for us. But you know, we got a very deep room, so we're we're very thankful for that. We talked with Lane and basically every other offensive player that we've had to talk to just about <clears throat> Dart's growth growth from year one to year two. And you said yourself, just what you saw just from the off season and the spring. But now that you've had twelve games to kind of see that growth come to fruition, what ways have you seen that looking back on it now? Yeah, I think he just has an unbelievable mindset. His work, work ethic is top tier. And, you know, the decision making that I think is the biggest thing and just total understanding of the offense. Um, you know, he's able to go out there, you know, process things at a very high level, not only just what are we doing offensively, what's the defense doing, you know, being able to get us in and out of checks and getting into good plays, uh, whatever that may be, and uh, just taking care of the football. And I think that's probably the biggest improvement uh, from a year ago. You know, he's always been an explosive player. Uh, now he's explosive and he takes care of the ball. So very fortunate to have one of the best you know quarterbacks in the country. All right. Anything else for this group? Last chance. Okay, guys. That's it. Thank, Thank you very you much. Luke.